Hey everyone, it's uh, Joe Glines here out of Dallas, Texas. And Jackie here from Copenhagen, Denmark. And uh, welcome to the uh, 59th Auto Hotkey webinar. Um, yeah. We are just getting started. And actually, I just see, I see it's just um, texting me. Uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, welcome. You're in the right place. Um, in this webinar, we're planning to just kind of help people with stuff they're working on, right? So uh, let's go ahead and jump in. Now we start off here. Uh, with there were by the way 102 registrants but everyone starts off muted just because anytime you get more than like let's say three people talking it's it's utter mayhem um, so if you have a question use the chat for now and or just in the chat say you have a question and then at some point we'll pause and let you ask your question if you'd rather just ask it uh, but yeah so um, that's that now um, we do have a couple announcements um, Jackie and I are, are excited to say we finally hit our 100th uh podcast yeah. which is crazy mm -hmm. number um that actually the hundredth one that was a fun one was you know why aren't macros popular anymore it's it's something for jackie and i granted we've been doing this stuff for a while right or have, you know we're older than i'm sure some of you and uh you know i'd say 20 years ago it was um much more common that people used to use macros and so we went into this of like why do we think it's not as common as it used to be yeah it's not because we don't believe people use macros at all right. anymore but yeah we're just seeing it less and less uh, for some reason so yeah yeah the other one which actually really i thought was a fun and interesting one jackie was the steps that that a process goes through and it stemmed from you're being involved with this uh, COVID-19, you know, doctors group and watching how it initially they started off manually typing stuff. And then over time, they started copying and pasting. And then over time, they kept refining it into where now it's actually got some automation behind it. Uh, but it was a really fun, interesting thing to think about that most things that when they're automated, you don't just start with the, hey, this thing is all robust and we're ready to go, right? Because you need to Kind of work through the exceptions, understand what's going to happen to get a pattern for the process. But that was a fun one. Okay. Uh, this other one, Isaiah and I uh, worked through with uh, just using Fiddler everywhere for for monitoring your your network traffic. And instead of doing web scraping, trying to you know use Fiddler to look at it, and then with uh, one HTTP request replicate the web scraping. Um, and it's to me, it actually so so. Side note, we actually created because you know we have our Udemy courses, and we had. When you go to load a Udemy course, it's painful because there's like, I'd say like 10 clicks for each video, maybe, maybe you know, somewhere right around there. It's just, it's a lot. I mean, when you got 40 videos, it's a lot of clicking. So I said, let's, let's write a program to do this. So we look at the website. Does IE, actually IE still works with it. Great. Okay. Well, it's, you know, IE, it's so easy with AutoHotKey. Let's do that. So we, we probably spent like a, a day in total, right? Working on it, getting it to work makes it where we can hit a highlight the files hit a button it uploads them all does it all perfectly oh we don't like it hit another button delete them all because there was no delete all you had to go through and delete each one separately <laughs> so this was working great right we, we go to post it to a group to say hey is anyone willing to to be a beta tester you know for this just to try it out um and like lo and behold like the next day uh udemy stopped letting ie work right they made a change and now it no longer supported right so we're like <laughs> which is we're seeing more and more, right? More in like YouTube doesn't anymore, Facebook you don't. So I think LinkedIn also. So unfortunately, you know, so easy to automate with IE yet it's just dying. So um, yeah, yeah, that was- that work, was, it's been totally disabled. So when people it. start IE, it automatically loads uh, Chrome interface instead. Hmm. So, yeah. I did read an interesting article the other day. It was on how between browsers you can now drag tabs in between browsers like with chrome and other things that was really interesting um to be able to do that that's but but again if if like more and more are turning to chromium using that as the foundation it makes it it's even easier right yeah uh, cool so now we do have this um our script highlight it's actually one that we we mentioned i think in the last webinar um and this morning, I think I found this article. Let me see if I can click it here and bring it up just so you see the, the page. I'll, I'll post all the stuff here. And of course, this is all recorded and you'll get the emails later. Um, but this HK rat loader, I love that term rat. Um, somewhere over on the other thing I mentioned it, but it's the rat is the uh, remote access uh, Trojan, I think is what they, they called it. 
Um, yeah, but it's you have it in in the deck. So, yeah, yeah, I borrowed it from from this page. But yeah, the yeah remote access Trojan. So someone or several several people are out there and they're creating compiled auto hockey scripts and then using that to slip in using the file install to to tweak current programs running on the computers and it's really you know it's giving auto hockey a, a black eye um and it just it, it's unfortunate but it's the way of course it's just they could use almost any language for doing this but um so we wanted uh to share this script and let me launch it Nope. So this script scanner, so what it does is you can, like I'm gonna actually drag, so this is this the scanning tool and we can drag in this in here and it will help you spot, you know, things you might be concerned about. And we actually have a se severity score on each thing. We're gonna add a little bit of a color here to help, help like the nines through, I think seven we said are gonna be red, critical stuff. You know, five or six through maybe four are going to be yellow, and then the, the twos and ones are greens. That doesn't mean they're okay. It just means that they're probably not as bad as you might think. Um, and, uh, and then we're going to have, uh, oh, no. Is it? No, it's not there. Um, I don't see it in here, but there's a way to bring up this help file, which I guess I clicked off of. Hold on one second. Bring up Chrome. And I had bookmarked it. So this this is, you know, this is actually in there, but we, we're just wrapping up the GUI today because we saw this thing this morning. And so we adapted our program to help um, be relevant to it. Um, so if you're not familiar with some of the commands, we have a little bit of a cheat sheet for people that are new to help understand like why they might be critical things, right? Why you should be concerned. So um, I'll, let me come into here and I'll just paste all this in the chat for now. But like I said, you'll get it in the email later. But that is that. And does anybody have any any quick questions on that? Um, and if not, we can jump into I on I sadly yeah, forget. I like it. Mark Mark had a question. He wanted to work on something. Um, cool. Mark, do you uh is there something you want to throw at us? Yeah, sure. Um, so I feel like I am in a, <laughs> maybe in the wrong, not the wrong place. You guys are all crazy technical. My, uh, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so my background with hockey is I worked in higher education. Um, I was on a chat team where we were chatting with students. And so we had a hotkey um, that had been converted into an exe file that we could use to chat with students because we had like, you know, multiple screens, three students at a time. Um, but it was really old and out of date. Nobody knew how to update it. And so I did some research and figured out how to, you know, put it back in AHK and then we could edit the, the content. So 100% like self-taught based on just what I found online. But by the end of it had written 60,000 lines of code in AHK to, to really, you know, make everything faster. We had links for everything. We had, you know, giant paragraphs of information that would get spit out. Um, and, you know, everything from, you know, because across the university, you have phone numbers for all sorts of different offices and stuff. So wrote a whole bunch of hotkeys for that. Um, and then when I left, I, I took the file with me so that I could update it and edit it for whatever I did next. Now I'm a resume writer. Um, mm -hmm. And so I'm writing a lot of the same things over and over again. So like, you know, I can type I live in Richmond, Virginia. So, you know, if I do VCU uppercase, nothing happens. If I type VCU lowercase, I get Virginia Commonwealth University. So I have to type that every time. Stuff like the link to my, to, I'm, my company's name is Resume Ready. So I have the link to Resume Ready is LRR and it pops out my link, right? I have stuff like that. What I'm dealing with right now though, is I have um, like longer strings of text for like my intro email or, you know, here's your first draft is ready. So I have like, I intro spits out my intro email. I one spits out, you know, your first draft is ready and all the information that goes along with it. But for some reason, like two weeks ago, completely randomly, sometimes they just don't work. And so I have the, the, the code basically written where it takes the clipboard, saves it for a second, replaces the clipboard with the content that I need, pastes it, and then puts what was in the clipboard back. So randomly, what's happening is it's just pasting the clipboard over and over. Yeah, I, I, and then, 
all of a I sudden think- it'll work though. So it's like, it won't work, won't work, won't work. And then suddenly it randomly works. And I can't figure out why. <laughs> it, there, and it's not a bug, even though to me, it feels like a bug. One of the very first things I would say is, because are you restoring the clipboard after you paste it? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. So make sure you add a sleep before you restore the clipboard. Yeah, I have sleeps after every, because I, I did that. I was like, let me put sleeps. I put sleep 200 after every single step. And now it just takes longer to sometimes not work. <laughs> well, even, even I would just confirm after you send paste, you know, send a sleep there and then that actually should take care of it. Right. Hold up. Um, but yeah, yeah, after the control V, that's, that's the only real place where you need to sleep. Right. And, and if you are not going to be posting stuff over and over in quick succession, that sleep can be, let's say, 500 milliseconds. Half a second before you you restore the, the clipboard, that should in almost any type of lag situation. Can I share the screen so you can see both the script and the subroutine I'm running for pasting? Well, be, before you do, just to make sure you, you understand, this is recorded and you know oh, it's cool. going to be shared. Okay, just want to make sure. Absolutely. Now. Just because I think, yeah, I saw Jean Milan on here. Um, it sounds like you're pretty vested in this tool you have and have written, but um, I want to throw it out there because I use Quick Access Pop-Up. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's a phenomenal tool, which does almost everything you described, but it's it's really, really easy to add stuff to it, to to pull in what you want. And we can go in, I mean, he's, he's the developer is here. It's written in AutoHotKey, but the vast majority of people that use it don't even know about AutoHotKey, right? Okay. But it's... Uh, it's a wonderful tool that um, would do a lot of what you're you're saying, you know. Yeah. And it's available, correct me if I'm wrong, like ten languages, I think, or something. And it, it's 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 crazy robust. But anyway, what, yeah, let's yeah. let's look at your tool, sure. and then maybe after we can show you real quickly how we could do it in QAP if you cared. Sure. Um, this also this issue is also happening. I I wrote or maybe I found it online a text for um, multiple clipboards. So I have it where the way I customize it. I hit, uh, you know, highlight something, hit control one, that's copy to clipboard one. And then for paste, I did control windows one. And again, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So I can show all of it if you want. Um, so this is like just an example of something that I would do, right? So like I type I prop and I want all this to pop out. So I have clips, I clipboard, clipboard all. I, I threw the sleep 200 to try and slow everything down. It was at 50. This is what I want the clipboard to be. And then my... Oh paste or subroutine. The other thing, when you actually, you, you are literally sending a, a control V, right? Yeah. Um, okay. It's You're not right, sending the keys. Right here. That's my subroutine for pasting. Yeah, I would increase that sleep um, after on 879. Yeah. Okay. To just give that a try because we've, um, a lot of us, have, go ahead, Jackie. Yeah. Most of the other things you have here, are stuff that are happening programmatically, is that the right term? So our hot key will take care of them happening almost instantly. So having a sleep after the clipboard has been restored, that's not needed. Having a sleep before you send the control V, most likely not needed unless you're doing a copy just before or something like that. Okay. Uh, if you go back up where you actually had your clipboard, uh, filled. You have the save of the clipboard. You don't need a sleep between those either. Okay. So this one, or you can increase the sleep after the control V to something more extreme, like a half or a whole second. Just to prove it out. Yeah. Yeah. But trust me, I, I worked through this exact same thing and it was maddening. I'm like, I don't understand, you know, what is going on. <laughs> yeah. It, it's weird that, you know, I could try it six times in a row and it will not work. And then the seventh time it just happens to catch and it works. Yeah. Um, of course, it's probably just going to work right now and you will not be able to read it right now. I will be clean, but you can try it if you want to. Okay. I appreciate that. Um, I was trying to think where my um, where I stuck the um, the clipboards. Uh, I'll have 
have to look for that. And again, maybe I just do the, you know, the kind of the, the same concept with that one too. insert the, the sleep after the paste. Yeah, the, the reason that these things are happening is that the only thing that's slow about this is the other program reacting to the key uh, action. So when you send it a control V, that program needs to go and open the clipboard and get the content, and then paste it into that control. And that's what's taking time. The rest of the things, filling the clipboard, storing the clipboard and all of that, it will be only instantaneous. Yeah, that's so. interesting because I, I think of it the other way, like it will take more time on the on the front end of it, but it makes sense that it makes it takes more time on the back end of it to open the clipboard and, and do the, the action of control V. Ian, Ian, what's interesting, and Jackie, correct me if I'm wrong here, but it's like you you send the control V, let's say it's notepad. Notepad's like, oh, okay, paste. I'm gonna, and meanwhile, Ahataki goes, hey, back up the clipboard, right? So it shoves the old one back in there and then says, paste. And, and then that's why it's your original, right? Yeah. It it took me forever to, to figure out why mine was doing it. Hopefully it's what yours is. Thank you, I appreciate that. You wanna try it real quick? Yeah, let me do a couple. Uh, let me, you know, adjust a few of those things in there really quick and, you know, move on to somebody else. I'll, I'll let you guys, I'll chat if it doesn't work. Yeah, hmm. I could just, just jump in to, if you wish. Sure. I was re reviewing my code where I'm doing that, the pasting the snippets uh, in quick access pop-up. It's called snippet and it's doing something like what you do. And just, I had a note in my, in my source code about making a sleep of 180 milliseconds before the send, before sending the control V. And in my note, it says some application, including Notepad, require this delay. So it's not all, all the application that requires uh, uh, a pause before sending. And I'm using send event uh, to send the control V. So I don't know if it can help you. I'm also blocking input before and after all this, just to make sure that not something else will, will uh, interfere with the, the action of pasting the, the text but it should not be an issue in your specific case. Is that because you're actually filling the clipboard with data before you paste? Or, or why do you... Uh, the the, you the clipboard is, is, yeah, the clipboard is filled before. And you don't before, use the clip wait command to actually... I'm using clip wait, yes when I fill the clipboard, then I check error level, then I sleep, then I send the control V. And this sleep is short, 180 milliseconds. I'm doing another sleep after the, the control V is sent, uh, and by default, it is 150 milliseconds. And it's all try and error I did a few years ago, so I, I, I it's not fresh in my memory, uh, the reason for all these, but, I took that note about making a pause before the control V for notepad. I don't know what, what other application may, be, may require that. And I'm not sure if it is still required, but it was when I did that, as I said, a few years ago. And Jackie, um, I saw also Ali wrote using send, just, you know, just send instead of send input. Um, and there's of course send event as well. Could you elaborate on which one you would recommend and why? <laughs> The send input and the send, uh, I think the send is using send event. If I don't remember correctly, it might actually be defaulted to send input now. I, I, I don't remember if that change has been made. But the only thing that that does is it uses different ways of putting the keys in the input stream to the program. So shouldn't really matter in this case. But again, if some programs needs a sleep before sending the key, like uh, John had, had seen in Notepad, using send control V versus send input control V might be slow enough for it to work better. That might, that, that's the only thing I... I, I, I just looked in the help. It says send by default. Send is a synonymous with send event. Yeah. For now. So, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> so, Dale and mentioned. send event can be a little bit slower as it's using an older method of putting 
um, key events and your program's inputs from them. Now, I'm curious, do you see Dale's comment of using set key delay? When you're sending a paste, would that really, like, would you see what's going on? Was it gonna change? Mm, the set key delay would be more important if you were actually sending the text. Right. And if that text was coming in scrambled or something like that, you could maybe use the send uh, key delay uh, to make that input come at a slower pace. But as it's being pasted, it's a totally different um, method used to actually fill in the content. So in so this case, I don't think set key delay would help. I, I did what you guys recommended and tried it, especially I have, I have one specific hotkey where, you know, I, I, it's in an email and it says, you know, here are the other services you can choose. And then I have it, I have a subroutine to create bullet points. I have three bullet points and then a sub bullet point and then a main bullet point and then another sub bullet point that uses the paster over and over and over again. And I almost never get that one to actually work correctly. And it just worked correctly. I tried it like four or five times. <laughs> so awesome. it seems like that extra delay at the end of sending control V absolutely worked. It, I'll tell you, like it is, it was for me such a hard thing to pinpoint when I troubleshooted through it because it was baffling. Um, incidentally, um, before like John actually want if you're interested, John, to, to do a little demo of how you could do it in yours. But um, there's, and I can point you to it, there's a, a way now to store, uh, to shove in like rich text or HTML into your clipboard to store. So if you wanted to paste like a, you know, a rich text thing instead of just plain text, yeah. um, <clears throat> you can well, do that now. Which that's is great. interesting because I, I did find my, um, what, what I'm calling multi-copy. Um, and and that's, that's the kind of thing, basically what I want it to do is I want control shift V because like when I'm creating templates for somebody's resume, right? I wanna be able to copy their name, their email address, their phone number, all their contact information into separate clipboards and then control shift V to paste it according to the, the templates style to, to say the style there. Um, and again, sometimes that works and sometimes that doesn't. Um, sometimes it matches the format and sometimes it doesn't. I just put a link in there in the chat for the uh, the pushing data into the clipboard in HTML format. Um, I think it is it's just HTML. It actually has options for anything, but um, it's something you might want to check out. It, it's pretty cool. <clears throat> if you're using this a lot, which it sounds like you are, um, it, it's a lifesaver. You know, this whole auto hockey is a lifesaver when you have the stuff you have, right? It's yeah. so great. Is it okay for me to share this multi-copy thing that I have just to see if you guys notice any immediate bugs in it like you did with the other one? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you want. Awesome. So it's pretty simple on the front end. It just, you know, control and control windows and then the number pad number and then either copy or paste. My copy always works. That's not an issue. I don't use cut. It was just a, from a script that I found online. And then this is the paste. And this is where I have a feeling the issue lies. I see that, that your functions here have the global um, word at the top of all of them, mm -hmm. which, which is kind of unintuitive, I think, in this case. But that shouldn't really be needed. I'm not sure. Uh, that's probably because you're using um, this old style of having multiple var variables mm -hmm. in data. That's probably why you have the global there for it to actually remember those variable names uh, between paste and, and uh, copy. So yeah. yeah, don't remove it just yet. Okay, is there a more efficient way to do the same kind of thing, have all of these kinds of clipboards? This was the only thing I could find that was even remotely similar to what I was hoping it would do. Yeah, you, you could store the data in an object instead of, of these types of, of uh, pseudo arrays, but I'm not sure if, if it really would give you much. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's just a matter of complexity. 
it might look a bit better in the script, but you won't really get any type of speed. Um, in the long run, you might get a bit of tidiness, but yeah, okay. I'm not sure you will get much from it. Yeah. What, what I don't understand is on 92, why are you sending control shift and then... And then the V in the brackets? Yeah. And that's to not send a big V or capital V. I actually have, I, I don't know. It's not that's necessary, one. right? That's actually, if you're trying to send a hotkey there, it is incorrect to do that, actually. Okay. Having so it just like, exactly like this, like control shift B, that's the correct way of sending the hotkey control shift B. But here's the question. That usually doesn't do anything on its own. Like control shift B doesn't do anything. What are you expecting to have? What are you expecting that would happen when you do that line? Uh, control shift V, I use in Google Docs. In, in Google Docs, it will match, instead of just control V, which pastes, control shift V pastes. Oh, okay, but paste the format. The okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 okay, I get it. So, but control shift B sent like you were just doing. Mm -hmm. What I understand is that with the brackets, it's going to send the literal letter B. So basically, um, it might be the reason why sometimes works and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. Sometimes it is sending control shift by themselves and then a literal letter B. While usually if you send control shift B like this, it would probably send the whole hot key. But I think it is a timing issue right there. Yeah. Uh, it, is, it is by the way that you're sending that hot key to that window, they're not reaching uh all together as a hotkey, that might be the issue. Right? Okay. Yeah, Thank you me. also have the, the shift up at the end. I think that, I threw that in because I couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. Yeah, it, it, it shouldn't be needed. Okay. okay. Thank you guys for that. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, that's what we're here for. This is, you know, and, and kudos to you for A, not knowing a thing about it and diving in and <laughs> You know, it, 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 it's, uh, th you know, I've been using auto hockey for like 10 years and I still am daily learning like what you can do with it. Like it's, it's crazy. Um, and you just keep steadily right now, like in the code, which is where Jackie was kind of going with it <clears throat> by looking at your code, we can kind of understand where you are programming wise. Yeah. There are ways you could write things that are be a little easier to update and to manage. However, it would be very, at least right now, confusing for you. And so we're, we're good about, it. look, the code's no good if you can't maintain it, right? So that's what us is the first one. Does it work? You know, can you maintain it? Great. Okay. Now can we offer something that might be a little better, you know, but if you can't maintain it, it's, it's just, uh, it, it ends up being bad, right? Because then you're stuck, which we don't like doing. I see that Dimitri, he said shift up should be shift space up. I'm actually not sure if that's needed. I think both can be valid. I'm not sure. I haven't checked the documentation, but I believe that both might be valid. Did anybody else have, or actually, so, well, or Jean, do you want to quickly just demonstrate in QAP, like one example of how you can add something, yep. um, especially like a snippet, since he's using a lot of snippets? I'll use my development environment for a, just a second to Okay. So, um, so quick access pop-up is a menu, uh, not this one, I'll hit this one for the, the demo. So it's a menu that um, 
at first was intended to launch folders, so to open folders. Uh, over time, it also, I added features to also launch application, documents, website, etc. And at some point, uh, discussing with Joe, uh, we developed this idea of having snippets in it. So there's also a category of a favorite that is called snippet. I'll show you first the snippet quick add, which is a way to quickly add a, a snippet. And I'll show you just, just a few minutes more to show you the, the various options that are behind the snippet. So quick add here will take what is currently in your clipboard and make it easy for you to add it as a, as a menu item. It will take the beginning of what's in your clipboard. What I'll just do, rename it to what I want here. It will be inserted in the, the sub menu, my snippets. It could be in the main menu or any other sub menu. And I can assign a, a hot string to it. So I'll assign the hot string uh, snip, comma, snippet demo. So comma SD, something that you would never type normally will be the trigger to replace comma SD with the content of my, um, of my snippet. Also, I like to use the option, do not wait for ending key. Uh, if you use hot strings in quick access pop-up, by default, you will have to press enter space or something like that to just trigger the, the replacement. But uh, I prefer to not to use it. So, it by, But by default, you would have to press enter, for example, or space or any ending character. So I'll save this new snippet here. And I'll open Notepad. So I'm typing here, and when I type comma sd, it is it is not replaced. Hey. Okay, well, we're moving on next. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know Murphy's law when you I, do a demo. <laughs> always, yeah. Yeah, low. So let's review what's. Okay, it is restarting and there's, oh yeah, okay, because it's the debugging, there's a debugging code here that is taking oh. this, so the, the application was not relaunched and when you modify the options in snippets, it is safer to relaunch the script to make sure that the options like the do not end, do not wait for the ending character, it's safer to relaunch the application, which normally is done in a few seconds, but because there was a, a debugging dialog box there, it was not working. Phew. So I'm still typing, then I hit comma SD and it replaced it with the content of my snippet, which was the content of my clipboard when I created the snippet. So it, and then show him in your menus where, where it yeah. is. So that's the yeah. So most of the time you will use it with us strings because it's really easy. But if you have a lot that you do not use very often, you can put them in a menu. So this one is in the My Snippets menu, so it's here. And it says here, it says that there, there's a hot string associated to it, which is a comma SD. And I don't want to take too much time, but just I'll just show the various options when you add a snippet. So these are all the, the type of favorite that you can add. If you add a snippet, you type the name that will be in the menu. The content of the snippet, you can maximize this window if you want to type something longer. You can use, um, uh, so there are various options. You can use fixed font if it helps you to have something more structured, like to type code is good to have fixed font to have the indentation being easy to, to see. And there are menu options, which are the same for all type of favorites. So you will decide where the favorite will appear, which with icon, you will, it, will it be associated to a shortcut? So you could use a shortcut instead of a hot string to type your uh, snippet. And in the advanced setting, there's the option to make it a mac make, make the snippet a macro mode. So the main difference is that if I'm using the regular mode, the text mode, the content here will be typed with the control V as you do in the, the script you showed us. But if you use the macro mode, it will be sent what character at the time. So it is slower, but you could insert in, in this uh, characters like um, enter for example, or backspace or so it, quick access pop-up will interpret the uh, auto at key um, codes to type them or to execute them. And it 
then it will be sent to the application you are working on. So for example, in a form, you, can, you could have tab to go from one field to the other by entering here the code, the code tab. So it does not replace completely the macro that you can do with quick access pop-up. You have much more flexibility. You can use variables and things like that when you do a macro. But when it is just to type something that is repetitive uh, in, in uh, an application or a form, you can use the basic text mode or macro mode uh, macros. If it, for any of those, you could have a prompt before. So type the name, for example, that will be displayed before you enter, uh, before you, or, or I would say more, the better example would be select the name field, just to make sure that your cursor, your uh, mouse uh, cursor is at the right place to start this uh, feed, this, um, this paste. And lastly, just uh, there are options that you can also, uh, use in the macro to insert uh, variables, to insert input prompt. I can show you an example. I was going to mention, John, was, um, yeah. you know, you could say like, you know, hi, hi, Bob, but, you know, you type a input box, it'll pop up, and then it'll insert that name in the middle of what you're writing, right? Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's like I a mail a, merge, kind of. like. I, what I, yeah, I have an example in my, my personal, uh, where is it? It's in here. Uh, where is it? I, know I use this a couple hundred times a day, you know, for the snippets um, and, and so, shortcuts to launch yeah. things. Here is a piece of text I use frequently in an email I have to send. So it tells me what is the first name, which is in French, what's the first name? So if it's, it's Joe, so it will insert Joe here in my, in my email. So something that is very uh, easy to, to make personalized uh, snippets, if you wish. That's the, the Thanks, small, the small um, capsule in French about yeah, there's, quick access. It's a crazy robust tool. Um, I put a link for a, for a discount. So Jean, don't listen to that, but I put a link to the, to yeah. the discount to it in the chat, <laughs> which is good till the end of May, I think. Um, but yeah. It's, it's there for you, Joe. <laughs> Joe is so much a supporter to quick access pop-up that uh, he deserves a discount code for any of his friends or subscribers. <laughs> It's, it's, I'll tell you, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing tool, right? It, it saves so much work. It's crazy. Does that allow, yeah. does it also allow for like, like what I was saying where, you know, there's bullet points and sub bullet points. Does it, does it incorporate that too? Yeah, you would have to, to test it and maybe the macro mode would work better for that because it would mm -hmm. send it more key by key. Yeah. Um, uh, and it depends on how the application reacts, you know, uh, so uh, um but you cannot do things like looping or having multiple clipboards or things like that. You can have multiple snippets, but uh, yeah. Uh, there there is another- Maybe for later, I would have another topic for you for later if someone else has something. Okay. Uh, like I was gonna say real quickly, Mark, there's another tool called Lintalist. Um, I'll send a, a link to it, but it, um, it, it can handle like HTML, rich text format, all those things. Um, it's, I don't, like the GUI myself and how it works, but it, it is very robust in what you can put in your clipboard, even like pictures and whatnot, right? And do stuff with them, so. I have uh, in my wish list to add the rich text and HTML, but it's a, it's a long shot. It's, yeah. it's complicated, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I am, it's, oh, here we go. Here's a job I found, oh. Um, so, Jean, I, I don't see anyone else, at least at the moment, I'm reading Ollie's post here, but um, did you wanna jump into what you were, going to talk about? Yeah. It's a, it's, I think it's an old issue. Maybe some of you heard about that. Uh, I found a post on the, the old forum in 2006. And maybe it's the same issue. Maybe it's different. But some users report that when they open the quick access pop-up menu, but it could be any menu. So for this example here, I will I create a short. Do I, am I still sharing my screen? No. So a simple script that create a menu with three items. And when I press Alt Q, it will show the menu. And if I select something, it will show the, the label that I selected. Can you zoom in a little, please? Mm -hmm. Can you zoom in a little, just cause it's. Yeah. Okay. Like okay. So the issue is that sometimes the menu is losing the focus for those that open the menu with the keyboard Alt key. So let's say I go in 
uh, I'll go where, how about where I go? So I'll go in uh, in Chrome. I open the, I'll launch, make sure it's launched. I did. So if I press Alt Q, the menu is open. You see at the top left, I, I put a specific location for the menu. And when I scroll here using the arrow keys, here it works. But some users report that sometimes it does not work. And instead, the focus of the keyboard is in the application. So it would be the Chrome page, the web page that would scroll instead of scrolling or changing the item in the menu. And the only solution that I found or email that I found about that was that the solution would be, and I'm, I'm currently working on that. So, uh, and I do not see, I've seen this once a few weeks ago, this phenomenon of uh, having the, the arrow uh, changing the content of the application instead of the menu, but I, I cannot reproduce it. So it's very hard to debug something like that and test solutions. But this, one of the solution I've found it was just to move the mouse at the location of the menu after before the menu is shown so that the mouse is on top of the menu and it would make that the menu would keep the focus instead of losing it. So, uh, so that's a very weird, weird situation. I'm just telling it to you in, in case someone already had this issue or read about that. And uh, if it is a frequent issue, I don't think it is. The only thing I found on the HQ forum, the old and the new one was something dated uh, 40 years ago, F 14 years ago, <laughs> no, <laughs> not 40. <laughs> I, I remember uh, Lectico is commenting on something like this, and it is something that Windows tries to um, protect against other Windows stealing focus. So it can be a hard issue to get around when you all of a sudden pop up some small work window like that. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that, that it may be, might be the alt key, as, as you have that there. It might be something that the Chrome or whatever window is catching before window. Yeah. Before but I, I use this alt key. Yeah, I use this alt key for the, the quick uh, demo here, but the user that reported that, that has uh, this more frequently, is using another alt key, is using double control key. Control, control. That's another way to pop up the menu in quick access pop up if you wish. So it doesn't seem to be specific to a hotkey uh, from what I see. And another user reporting some reported something that is not exactly the same, but this user was uh, used to open the menu and then press a letter to jump to the first item having this letter in the menu pressing P for example, to go to the first P. And it says that sometime it stopped working. So this if, may if be related. Use, um, if you use the Windows bar, what's the name of the menu? Uh, in quick access pop-up or it's, it depends. Uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, each menu and sub menu is, is a different menu. So they are all have their, their name. But, but do they have a class or something else in common then? Something that you might be able to win activate or something after actually showing it. Yeah, they are not grouped like that to do something that would be centralized. But that's something I'm looking for. What can be done to, to activate, but it's already active. It, it is already on the top. It's not behind the, the window that, that receives the keyboard. So the menu is at the top, but the keyboard action is not sent to the menu, it's sent to the application behind. Yeah, so, so you're looking for some way to shift keyboard focus or keep it there. Keep it. Yeah. I, I, in fact, the, the way I see it, the focus is, is stealth, still stealth. I'm not sure how to conjugate that in English, but something, another application or Windows is taking the focus of the keyboard from the menu to the other application and quick access pop-up did nothing for that or, or any, any script that would do that in auto -add key does nothing to do that. It's just losing the focus and, and trying to retrieve it. I don't think it's possible. And the user says the only way was to restart the application to, to be able to uh, regain the, the, the focus, the keyboard focus because the mouse is still working. 
if you're using the mouse, it works, but this is a keyboard like many are that is keyboard uh, junkie. So that is always using, never use the mouse or as least as possible. Could you, once, once the menu pops up, could you force the mouse to jump to it so that if they do then use the... Yeah, that's, that, that's the solution I found. In fact, it's not after the menu is, um, it's not after the menu is shown, but before, because after the menu is shown, you cannot do anything. The, it is the menu that is waiting for something to be selected. Auto at key is losing control on what's happening when it shows a menu. It be, then it becomes windows that manage the, the menu that you shown. And, and, and when a user select an, an item in the menu or cancel, but if it selects an item, then the script will regain the control to do what has been selected by the user. Have, have so, you... so the solution that I'm trying now, but and I'm just working on this today, so I don't have a, a working solution, but I could show you uh, what it, it would looks like. It would be that before showing here, it would be uh, mouse move. Is it mouse move? No, what no. is the mouse move? Uh, and then I know that this menu, I forced the location to 50-50, so I would put it to 55-55. And then if I reactivate that and press Alt-Q, the mouse is moved here, even if the mouse is here. When I open the menu, the mouse is taken here. So maybe it will solve the issue. So I will put it in a beta version and send it to the user to see if it says that the issue is disappeared or not. That's what I'm wishing. But to me, I, I hate this kind of solution when you don't know why it was not working and you don't know why it is now working just by doing something, a little magic to move the mouse. So it's not, but, uh, but if it solved the issue, that's great. John, I, I know that you already said that it might not be the hotkey, but I know from back in the day when I started it, it was, it was quite common to use a key weight for these um, control alt shift keys. Yeah. Just to make sure that after you press the hot key that the control key or what, whichever key was released before you did your action because yeah. a lot of programs actually um, act on the up event. Uh -huh. So if Chrome is actually seeing that the alt key has been released, it might take focus back from the menu. Mm -hmm. That's something I'm guessing. It, it might yeah. not be. Uh, so in this case, it would be key, key, key weight alt? Yeah. Alt, uh, alt up or? Just it, it, it always waits for up as default. OK. So but yeah, you could set it specifically. So, so if I do it now and I say alt Q and I didn't release alt yet, I'm releasing it now. So it does what we expect. If it's not there, and I press Alt Q, and then I haven't released the uh, the the Alt key yet, but it's already open. So yes, it could be, but the user can select any Alt key. So it's um, yeah, but then yeah, for I, the I'm... modifier, is it only the Alt modifier that uh, that can cause this kind of issue? I'm not sure. It probably depends on whichever program you're using. I'm just guessing. I know yeah, the yeah. Alt key is the one that normally focuses the menu, so that might be one of the ones giving. Okay, activity. what you say? Yeah, what you say? It opens the menu of the application behind. Yeah. But in this case, it's not the issue. Is not exactly that. The issue is that it will scroll the page. Yeah. So uh, um, yeah, but it's a good good guess <laughs> or good good thing to yeah. try. Um, yeah, thank you. So that was not something fun. It's just something, you know, these kind of issues that you do not feel you have a good control on what's happening. <laughs> thank you, guys. Uh, let's, uh, let's get back to Ali's, you know, he, he made a post here talking about the, you know, there's a job description mentioning you're building RPA bots using Python and VB.net programming. Um, also using RPA tool, UiPath, or Microsoft Power Automate to build the bot framework, um, and then to review code or solution. He says, yeah, that's, it's kind of a generic, they're not saying a lot about it, but how would one try to say, 
hey, I actually use AutoHotKey and AutoHotKey, you know, can do all these things. Um, it, it, I think, sadly, it would be, it'd be a tough sell, right, to me, to me in my opinion. Um, but it's doable, but boy, it, it would be hard to convince someone who's already listing the things that they're looking for. Um, when they're not looking for something, I think it's a lot easier. But because yeah, but if you're if you're interested in um, in the job as it is, if if you think you can learn or whatever, um, you might still you leverage your auto key knowledge as being able to automate processes, uh, understanding RPA, um, understanding all the different concepts of building a bot framework stuff like that you, you could probably use the, the knowledge skills are highly from, transferable yeah yeah but yeah you, you might not be able to sell them on using autohotkey but you might be able to use the skills from autohotkey as as a selling point and, and then possibly after you get in slowly saying hey oh man this is really hard and, and as you know in autohotkey i can do it like this with two lines of code right and and kind of you know slowly shift it over yeah. Is it UI path? Which one of them is it that actually lets you use our hotkey code? One of them does. I don't remember which one of them it is. I don't know either. No. And speaking as somebody who does, you know, career counseling and coaching and resumes and everything for a living, if you can be tenacious enough to to go to the company and say, hey this is how you're doing it and give it, we, we call it like a value added project, right? Like this is how you're doing it. This is how I would do it and look how much more efficient I can be. Then you might not be right for that role, but they might want to bring you in and you can say like, I can come in separate from that role and I can be your guy who implements this because hotkeys I've always found to not make any sense to anybody until you show it to them. So if you can demonstrate this to them, then, you know, regardless of whether you're not exactly right for that position, you, you could end up kind of selling yourself into a new position based on your hockey knowledge. Good point, Mark. Yeah, and I'd say at one point, I also heard people um, spe specifically using the short version of Arahaki, the AHK, as a language name. I usually um, do stuff in AHK just to, to try and soften and remove that hotkey word from it because it, it seems sometimes as as something people think oh he just records macros and then plays them back or whatever I, I don't know what people think but yeah it's it's worth keeping in mind at least yeah good point Jackie All right, does anyone, I'm going to actually, because we're coming up on the hour and it's convenient, I'm going to hit stop recording and start the second hour here. But um, does anyone else have anything they want to share? 